jackpot system now established, it's crucial for clients to grasp the role of fund managers and administrators in processing their claims. And this need is underscored by the growing trend of major employee benefit fund administrators exiting the sector. Now, employers are therefore advised to cultivate relationships with administrators who are dedicated to being long-term partners, especially for managing corporate retirement funds. Joining us live to speak on this is the head of platforms at financial advisory firm NMG Benefits is Pamanda Butelezi. Good afternoon, Pamanda, and thank you so much for joining us. Just how pervasive is the trend of fund administrators now leaving the sector? Is there a, a concern of a brain drain in the market? Good afternoon, Cindy. Thank you so much for having me. Um, Yes, Cindy, I think we've seen over the number of years, the past few years, we've seen the number of um, big financial institutions leaving the, the industry, more especially when it comes to the administration of the freestanding funds, right? Um, I think as much as there's been that exit that we've seen, but I think the very few fund administrators that are still left in the market, they are skillful and they are actually able to do the job. All right, but there isn't a gap or rather a, a vacancy in the market. You're saying that the supply of financial, particularly retirement administra uh, administrators, is adequate and they're able to service their clients. Absolutely. I think absolutely they are. Uh, I think, in, in fact, if anything, there was just more fund administrators actually who were trying to do the job. Uh, but I think those who are dedicated to continue and those who actually value the relationship that they've built with, the corporate, um, their, with their corporate clients are the ones who are still left in the market. And I think they're skillful enough to actually do the job. Uh, it, also, it also allows them just to build a strong relationship that they need to build with their clients, knowing that there are a few, that a few ones still left in the market to, to offer this service. All right, we find ourselves here now with the two-part retirement system being implemented or put into effect as of the 1st of September. We know that uh, those that are cash-strapped uh, and, and desperate to access any funding, be it to settle their debt or to, uh, for any other circumstances that they want to pay for, would come to administrators. This is not a function that is necessarily insourced with your human resources in a company. This is where the administrators come in. Uh, and maybe you can explain what the role of uh, an administrator is beyond processing claims. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think with two ports for the very, very first time in our country, uh, letting the administrators have an opportunity to actually interact directly with the members. So this actually speaks to the importance of the role that the fund administrators uh, need to play. So it just goes extremely beyond um, the, the role of paying claims. I think the importance of this role for me, uh, it also just like revolve around the, the key relationship that the fund administrator will have to actually have. Uh, for, for, an, for an instance, um, a fund administrator needs to build solid relationship with the employers. Why are we, say, why are we thinking that it's important to do that at NMG? It's simply because um, if there is a good relationship between the employer and the fund administrator, then all the expectations and the education that needs to be done to the member can also be done to the employer. And for the reason that uh, the members interact with the employers more. So you can imagine in a case of the member leaving employment or that the member will actually interact with their HR. That's where they will complete the forms and uh, submit the forms. In most instances, when the member has not uh, understood the process better, they, they live with the impression that now that I've completed the forms, uh, that, that I will get my money as soon as my employment ends here. But it's not the case at all, because what happened is the fund administrator still needs to receive the last contribution, um, and, and it, the employer has about seven days um, of the following month to actually uh, to 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 submit the contributions for the uh, the last contributions of, of the member, and they also in some instances have up until the fifteenth of the month to actually submit the schedules. So already you can see that uh, by the time the member leaves the employment, they have not received their money, and because the, the last contribution still needs to be administered. So if there's a good relationship between the employer and the fund administration, then the members' expectations can actually be um, can actually be managed much better by extending that process. There's other stuff as well, I mean, in the process, which are very critical, like the application of tax. Um, members don't often understand the impact of tax when they actually leave the employment or when they claim. Uh, all of that as well, is, 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 it plays a huge role in how soon the member will receive their money. Um, the application of tax, if there's any tax issues, if there's a good relationship between the employer again and, and, the, and the fund administrator, all of that uh, discussions can be had with the member upfront just to make sure that the member understand 
what is going to be the impact of their claim. So I think that the, 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 the role of the fund administrator it needs to go beyond just thinking that um, I will submit the claim and get my money. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be done behind the scene. But I think most important as well, fund administrators need to get to the point whereby they see their role as, uh, they, they see educating members as part of what they need to do within their role as fund administrators. All right, very briefly, as Pamanda, as we say goodbye to you, just in helping members who are eligible and will apply for the two-part retirement fund uh, option of their savings, what do they have to have for compliance, the criteria, the documentation, so that their claims are not rejected or delayed? Okay. So in that case, members will have to have an, an identity number. So they will have to have an, a unique identity number that can be verified. Members will have to be registered with, with SALS. They will have to have a tax number. Um, that will be part of the requirement, as well as also members will have to be in a position to produce the bank account that's in their name. Uh, excuse me. In most instances, the third part payment is not allowed. So it's important that when we make the payment, we're paying directly into the member's bank account. And those three things are critical things as well that in our process at NMG we have identified as important. And those are the things that we will verify within the process. The application and, and submission of forms can be done online in most instances, and but you need to have um, to have in, to be in position to be able to produce those three things: ID number, tax number, and also produce the bank account that's in your name. Having that upfront just allows the fund administrator to start the process and doing all the verifications that we need to do without actually delaying the process any further. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us here uh, on ENCA. That is financial advisory a firm uh, a member at NMG Benefits. It's Pamanda Butelezi just explaining the application process for those that will be uh, taking the option of the two-part system.